So I'm planning a trip down to the Great Smoky Mountains in a couple of weeks. Six days in the park, staying at the campground in Cosby. And I picked Cosby because it looks like it's fairly central to a lot of the waters I want to hit. It's a pretty short drive to at least a dozen rivers, both on the Tennessee and North Carolina side. Now in planning the trip and researching the waters that I definitely want to fish, two of them made the cut. The Little Pigeon River, both the main stem and the middle prong of it. But there was another one nearby in the same Greenbrier River watershed called Porter's Creek. Now this creek sounded familiar, but I couldn't quite figure out why. But sure enough, there is a Porter's Creek caddis that has been on my to-do list for a while. So I thought, what better time to tie this? I always need caddis dry flies, and I'm going to be heading down there in a couple weeks, so I might as well put a few of these in my box and pay tribute to Jim Ellison of Morristown, Tennessee, who came up with the pattern. Now the pattern is very similar to a standard elk hair caddis with just a couple of exceptions. He doesn't leave the butt ends of the wing, you know, on it. He cuts them short and buries it with a thread head. And the overall fly is tied in pretty light colors. Uses a cream or a tan for a dubbed body and then either a white or light ginger for the palmer hackle. And then the wing is a light caribou or a bleached deer or elk hair but it is a simple tie and I think it's a really cool looking pattern. And I can't wait to give it a try when I get down to the park in a couple weeks. So there it is, Jim Ellison's Porter Creek Caddis. Now do notice it's got a pretty big head, but you know, we're gonna have to have a big head because he doesn't tie it like a standard elk hair caddis where you push up the butt ends, you kind of bury them. And I'm tying this on a size 14, that's standard length barbless dry fly hook. And I'm using some tan thread. This is a 70 denier. I'll put a base down to the start of the bend. Now, the first thing I'm gonna catch in, just some dry fly hackle. Pretty small piece of white or light cream or light ginger. This is a, a white. And we don't want these to be too long, maybe a hook gap. So let's go ahead and catch it in back here. And we can go a little bit around the, the bend of the hook. And we'll bury this front piece right here. I, I left it a little bit long. I'm going to need to trim this. Now take the thread to the back, put a little wax on it. Now let's take some light tan dry fly dubbing. This is a super fine. This pack is a number two. And there is a color called tan right here, which kind of looks like a cream, almost a white. And we're not putting much on here and we're not putting it very thick. It is a caddis body, so maybe a, a couple inch noodle. Well, that was giving me all kinds of mess, but uh, eh, we're gonna be fine. And the good thing about it, if you get a lumpy body, we can probably hide it with this Palmer tackle. Now up to you how close together you want to put these. If you don't want a real high floater, you could probably get away with three or four wraps. But the water, I am anticipating fishing this in. I want something that's going to be a pretty high floater, so I'm putting them pretty close together. Now for the wing, it calls for a light caribou or maybe a bleached elk hair or deer hair. And I got a medium sized tuft. I got my stacker here. See how well this is gonna do. And that's gonna be fine. Now before I catch it in, I'm gonna give my thread a clockwise spin. Just kind of cord it up a little bit. And we're gonna tie this in about to a, the hook bend, maybe just a little bit past it. I think that'll work right there. Try a pinch wrap, and don't get too close to your eye, because we are gonna bury this, this front piece right here. And it's easy to you know, close off your eye if you're not careful. And I've tied six of these and had some issues with at least a couple of them. So I think we're fine right there. Let's get some pretty tight wraps before we snip this. Now here's one tip with a big fly like this. I've got a lot of fibers, hairs coming forward, and you might not be able to snip them all at once. So what I'll do, just kind of go in here and sculpt it a little bit, snip them a little bit at a time. That might 
just help keep from jostling this wing around the side of the hook. Now we do have a little bit of a mess right here. I'm gonna to have to just try and trim this a little bit. Most of this we're gonna be able to bury with our thread, but just be mindful not to close up your eye. Okay, I've got a few fibers sticking up over my eye right there. I'll show you what I do about that in just a second. Let's go ahead and whip finish it. So what I'll do before putting the head cement on it, I've got a little bit of a mess right there. I've got this little thread burner right here. So show, show you what it is, the Thread Zap 2. Not too expensive, available on Amazon or probably any craft store. Just takes a couple of batteries and then I'll just touch it to some of these fibers that are sticking forward here. Okay, so that doesn't make for the prettiest fly, but I can still get my tippet up through there. So I think we're good to go. No real cleanup required, just drop a head cement and this guy's ready to fish. So I appreciate you watching everybody. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.